Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You know, last week, so many people were, were, were moved and, and stirred by the message. And of course, like you said, there's two types of people in church. There's hearers and doers in the church. Those are the only two types of people in church. And, um, you know, this week I was sitting with, uh, with Sharon. And, you know, Sharon approached me last weekend. Uh, several people did, but Sharon said, I need to meet with you. And I said, okay, let, let's meet. And she's been a, a great friend. John, her husband, who is now in glory, uh, such a great man. But she, she comes to the office. We sit down. We start talking. And she starts sharing with me just about this message shift and, and what she felt that God was speaking to her into her life. And so I just started asking her questions and we're sitting, we're talking. Well, before you know it, 40 minutes later, she's preaching at me and, and it's, I mean, it's just, it's a whole other share and I've never seen before. And, and if you're not careful, the reason I share this with you is if you're not careful, God can sp- speak a word in season in your life. And if you don't activate that word, whatever you don't use, you what? Lose. And so you have to be someone that has to get the revelation that every single week that you come to church, God is trying to drop a seed in your life that wants to produce a harvest in your life and through your life. And anyways, long story short, so as we're sitting, we're talking, and I said, what's, what's burning in your heart? What is, God's, what is he speaking to you? What's he telling you? And um, we got into more conversation. Well, you know, her desire is like, I want to see the body of Christ really grow spiritually. And we started talking about how the Holy Spirit has been given to us and sealed by the Father to us. And he's our helper and, and, and he wants to lead us and guide us and, and develop us. And so we, we came up with this idea. And, 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 of course, she's never done this before, but she knows that the shift has come and God's asking her to do something. And how many know that you're never too young and you're never too old to do something for God, right? You're never too tall. You're never too short. You're never too skinny. You're never too healthy. You're never too poor. You're never too rich, right? You're never too anything for God. God's just looking for someone who makes himself available. And when you make yourself available, God can do extraordinary things. And so uh, come, come um, November, we are going to launch uh, a weekly Bible study that is going to focus on how to live the spirit-filled life life and it'll be every other weekend to begin with and it'll go every week uh during the week in the morning uh for those that are maybe are stay-at-home moms or anybody and it's open to men women everybody and uh in january the 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 dream of her heart is to be able to go into convalescent homes where where elderly people have maybe lost hope or or feel depressed or have no family that come visit them. And so we're going to move Elevate Church into convalescent homes and start bringing life. And Sharon's going to lead the way. Come on. Can we give the Lord a big hand clap? <clears throat> it's never too late. Say that with me. It's never too late. It's never too late. How many believe? And, and I want you to please listen to me. Don't just have religious ears. Listen. How many believe that, that God has, has destiny? plan for your life like you know that God has a destiny for you I mean because I don't think you were born just by accident God doesn't create accidents God creates purpose and every single one of you have a divine purpose in this life you have a destiny that God has already prefabricated pre-designed that has already prepared for the future of your life even for this very moment right now in your life regardless of whatever you're facing whatever obstacle challenge trial whatever you God are listen God's not shocked about your now he's not shocked so so we all agreed that you have destiny but I want you to know something destiny is decided by God but shifting is decided by you so God's already made up his mind the problem is that most people haven't yet And you're never going to shift into this new season that you're wanting or desiring to shift into until you make a personal decision. So many times we're angry, mad, upset, disillusioned with God, and we start questioning, well, God, why haven't you done? God God already made up his mind. God has already laid everything where belongs, the stars, the moon, the sun, the earth, the water, you myself our destiny our purpose our plan the question is is when will you decide to shift into gear with God that's the question 
And I really believe that the moment you decide like Sharon did last week, she decided, I got I, I to gotta stop. I got to do something. Something's got to change. And I'm sure so many others were probably also feeling this way and really thinking, how am I going to move forward? And, and I share this with you because the Apostle Paul also was challenged with people in the church People in general, he would speak to masses, and, and he saw that people weren't shifting. And, and so he begins to share a little bit of his own personal testimony and hoping to inspire, to motivate, and to move some people, which I'm hoping we're doing that today with you, that some of you are going to be motivated to be activated with God's divine purpose for your life and stop wasting time because time is short. Look at this, uh, Philippians 3.13. Here's what the Apostle Paul says. He says, brethren... I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet. Ever say, laying hold of it yet. And so, mind you, Paul, at this point of his life, he's accomplished so many things for God. He's led masses to Jesus Christ. He has changed so many people's lives, but he is still at a place in his life. And, and mind you, while he's in the process, he's been arrested he's been in prison he's been beat he's been left out in the ocean he meant he's been betrayed the people that said they were with him were against him he was backstabbed you name it he's been through everything and yet he says brethren i don't even regard myself as having laid hold of it yet in other words i haven't arrived yet and aren't you glad that you haven't arrived yet because if you did man that would be a sad day for all of us and so he says, but one thing I do. Everybody say, one thing I do. So I haven't laid hold of it yet. I haven't laid hold of it yet. But one thing I do is forgetting what lies behind, and I'm reaching forward, or I'm shifting forward to what lies ahead. And there are too many people right now that are sitting in today's services, not just here at Elevate, at every single church in Santa Clarita, every single church in America that have been so comfortable or have been literally just jammed in one gear for too long or, or, or have just decided to give up and quit and stop driving. And, and, and the one thing Paul said is, listen, you have to come to a place in your life, regardless of all the pain, the suffering, the hurt, the challenges, you have to know that you have yet to obtain what God has for you. You have yet to see. In other words, Paul was telling the church, hey, listen, guys, there are things that I have yet to become. There, there, is, there are things that I have yet to do. There are things, Sharon, that I have yet to see. In other words, Paul was, 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 was infused with, with not only the Holy Spirit in life, but he was infused to constantly make a shift in his life. And not just stay comfortable and, and mediocre and, and procrastinating all the time and, and making excuses. But he, he was trying to awaken the church and say, come on, we can't just stay in the same old life, the same old style, the same old job, the same old finance, the, the same old everything, and nothing changes when you live a life of there is things to be yet done, there's, 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 there's a reason why you should wake up. It, it, puts, it, puts, it puts passion. I mean, what wakes you up every morning? What is it that wakes you up every morning to say, I can't wait to live today? What is it that stirs you up? What is it that moves you? What is it that brought you to church today, this morning? I'll tell you what, there's a yet. There's a yet for every single one of your life. And Paul is saying, hey, listen, I'm not trying to live on my past accomplishments. I'm not trying to live on my past hurts. Some of us have the same testimonies from too, too many years ago. And God's saying, I'm trying to create some new testimonies with you. Right. You know, some of, some of us, we still have that same old crusty little verse on a little paper that we've held on for the last 20 years. And praise God, that's the only verse I know. <laughs> God's like, no, there's more. Open your Bible. There are more verses. There is more life. There's more wisdom. There's more innovation. There's more creativity. I'm trying to do something in your life that you have yet to see, hear, or even become. Too many of us get caught up doing, 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 but you never be nothing. Are you hearing me today? Come on. Look at your number and say, it's time to shift. We got to shift. Yeah. 
I love this. I mean, think about it. Paul was basically saying, hey, guys, here, here's what I'm trying to tell you guys. I still have more life in me. I, I, there's, there's, there's still life inside of me, which means if there's life inside of me, then there's something to do. Have you ever asked yourself this question, why am I not dead? Why am I not in heaven right now? I mean, we know the disciples said that. Paul said that. He said, man, it's so much better just to go to heaven right now. It would be so much better because then we'll be pain-free, worry-free, every free, you, whatever free. And, and Paul says, but it wouldn't benefit you if I leave you. The reason that you are not in heaven yet is because there are things that you need to do on this earth. And until you come to that conclusion, you're just going to live life wandering around or wondering, why am I here? Every single one of you, every single one of you, not everyone's called to have a platform, not everyone's called to be big and blow up, but let me tell you something, but everyone here is called to have influence in someone's life, everyone in this room. And, and not just influence like, oh, look, I got them to make cookies. You know, no. Oh, look, I, I influenced them to finally celebrate tamales every Christmas. No. No, like, oh, yay, we kept tradition. Praise the Lord. No. No, no, I'm talking about what mark, what, what, what are you going to leave in the life of your children? What are you going to leave in the life of those who have the privilege and honor to be in your circle of influence? What are you going to leave behind that's going to, to tell people or, or make people think, man, remember when Mauricio, remember, man, if it wasn't for, I mean, we want, we want to leave a mark in people's lives. That's what we want. How many here have ever driven stick shift? Yeah, manual, right? Now, when I was younger, <laughs> I, I super enjoyed stick shift. And, uh, and as you get older, let me hear all my older people. No, don't lift your hands. You're not older. <laughs> You're about to wave your hands. I'm like, yay. No, when I was younger, I, I, I really liked stick shift. But the older generation would always be, you know, they'd be hating. And, right, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be like, why, why, what's so fun about stick shift? Why do you want stick shift? Well, here, here's my explanation. The reason I would want stick shift is because when you drive a manual car, you have the power and you have the potential to control the speed, to control the gears. I control the engine. I, I control it all. <laughs> but when you drive an automatic car, have you ever been getting on the freeway and you're like as if you can really push your car forward? You're like, come on. And you're like your foot's all the way down on the gas and nothing's happening. And you're just like, I hate this car. Well, if you had a stick shift, you wouldn't have that problem because you control the speed. You can, literally, you can literally be the power behind the wheel and not think that you're actually pushing your car forward when you're driving automatic. But how many, how many of us know that there are too many people living on automatic and not shifting into gear? You've been stuck in the same gear for too long. And God is saying to the church, God is saying to elevate, I am done with that. Remember what I said last week? God said, I have moved on. But we're still talking about the accomplishments of what I've done. Have you ever met someone or talked with someone and all they do is talk about the past? Hey, remember when we used to, remember, like, dude, that's like 30 years ago. Calm down. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. And, and, and then we wonder, why, why are we not shifting to this, this new season? Why am I, why am I not shifting to this, this new place that God has? For, like I hear the pastor saying all these amazing things, but why, why am I not shifting into it? I'll tell you why. Because you know what? Shifting is a personal decision. It, you have to decide, okay, God, uh, my job is to bring you the word. My job is to bring you the, 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 the prophetic word of God to you. Your job is to make a personal decision to do something with it. It'll never become, it'll never bear fruit until you start working that fruit. You'll never see nothing amazing. But we're stuck. But how many know that God is a God of potential? Do you believe that? That means that God is a God of potential, of Renewing our mind, renewing our life, renewing our family, giving us a new day. He's the, he's, he is the God of potential. And the truth is that not many of us, or I'll just say it this way. None of us are, 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 are operating at 
nobody in this room, including myself. And that's good. You know why? Because that means there's room for growth. That means there's room to be better, a better husband, a better father, a better leader, a better employee. You can be better. And so nobody in this room is at 100%. But how many know that though we may not be maximizing our full potential, we have the capacity to be people with potential. Let me give you the definition for potential. All my stories are going to tie in. Ready? Here we go. Potential means the power not being used yet. Potential is power not being used. Everybody say, yet. So in other words, that means that God has placed power in us to shift, but you and I have the responsibility to shift. Potential is who you are, not but nobody, but, but nobody knows it. Let me give you a few points. Uh, potential is this. Watch this. Potential is this. Potential is what you really can do, but you haven't done it yet. Okay? It's what you really can do. And I'll explain that right now. Number two, look at this. Potential is how far you can go, but you haven't done it yet. Uh, here's another one. Potential is how much you can accomplish, but you haven't accomplished it yet. Here's the problem. Potential is not what you have done but what you haven't done yet. Potential is not what you have done. And so many of us, when we look at people, we only see the potential of what they have done, but we don't see the potential of what they haven't done yet. What does that mean? That means you get labeled. That means that people put a cap on you. That's as far as you can go. That means people, and people are good at labeling. Oh, they're good at, man, I can, they're good at telling your story. It's like you've never even heard my story. For example, Elevate Church. You know, New Hall, let's just take New Hall, California. New Hall, California had a reputation, had, past tense, had a reputation and was defined or labeled the armpit of Santa Clarita. Yeah, that's what they said about New, that's what they said about us. When we first got here, New Hall looked like the armpit of Santa Clarita. And I ain't going to lie. All right, let the facts, let the facts be the facts. Man, walking in this neighborhood was, it was pretty dark. We had prostitutes on New Hall, I mean on Main Street. Prostitutes, we had gangbangers. Man, we had, you think homeless people right now is an issue? Oh, no, it was everywhere. I mean, it was dirt on the floor. There was no cement. You guys are all blessed. You get to experience all of our fruit and work. And you get to enjoy it. But, but this was, this is what they, so here's what happened. When people would come and be invited by friends, they would walk into Elevate Church and they would immediately size us up. And they would think like, hmm. Well, when you're just starting, I mean, we're only eight years old, right? We're still babies. We're eight years old and we've done a lot for eight years. We have a lot of influence. But we're eight years old and, and people would walk in and you can tell that it didn't matter what you said. It didn't matter how thick the presence of God was. They had already labeled us, and they wouldn't come back again. Now, but check this out. But in, in, in throughout the last years, people would come back and walk in here and be like, oh, my God. Wow, the preaching is different. The music is different. Man, the atmosphere is different. The look is, wow. And I'm thinking, uh, duh. <laughs> what would you think? We weren't going to change? No, but isn't that true? I, I was watching this week on the History Channel. Um, I was just, not that I was being intentional, like, let's learn History Channel. No, I just happened to be bored, and I landed on there. And I started seeing these machines, like, like digging dirt. I'm like, what are they doing? You know, and, and so I'm, like, watching. I get interested, and I see them digging dirt. Well, come to find out what they do is they dig tons and tons and tons of dirt with a mine for gold. But, but they get tons of it. And as I was watching the, 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 the show, I, I, I was listening to the guy. They said, no, what we're doing is we're, we're digging for gold. And I'm thinking, man, they're gonna, I'm like, wow, they're going to have like big old nuggers, you know, like big old pieces of gold. I'm like, that's awesome, man. I should get into that. But anyway, that was a little dream. <laughs> but anyways, but, but check this out. So they dig for tons and tons of gold only to get one ounce of gold. I'm like, what the? All that work, but let me tell you something. But miners don't mind getting dirty because they're looking for gold. The problem with church people is that they look for dirt and they overlook the gold. I'll say that again. Yeah. Uh, 
Christians look for dirt but overlook the gold. See, we look at the dirt of your sin. We look at the dirt of your addiction. We look at the dirt of your habits. We look at the dirt of your behavior. But let me tell you something. But God sees the potential and the gold inside of every single one of you. Amen. Can I give you a, a real quick illustration? What is this, guys? Let's see. How smart? What? You guys are intelligent. Wow. Okay. What can you do with this rope? Hopscotch, okay. You can save someone, right? You can, throw, you know, tie a little, you know, life, life vest, whatever, throw it out, whatever. Okay, save someone. What else? You can jump. I wonder if I still got my jumping skills. Let's see. Anybody ever jump rope? Okay, okay. You can do rodeo, huh? Right? Come on, cowboy, right? You can do some rodeo up in this place, right? You can totally do rodeo. We can totally just like, you know... I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, right? And we can, and we can get, we can catch horse, we can catch bull. What else can you do with this? Huh? Hold your pants up. Hey, you know what? That's creative. You can, hey man, hey, I can't afford a belt. I did that when I was a kid. I had a little rope there. I'd be like, Mom, no tengo cinto. Get a rope. I'm like, Oh my God, Mom. I did. I've done that. Let me see all my rope belt people. Come on, come on, man. There's poor, and then there's po. I was po. Yeah. What else can you do with this? Tug of war. Yay. Okay. What else? Huh? Climb. You can climb with this. Hey, how about a piñata? Huh? We can throw a little piñata over this thing. Right? Make the piñata move. So, so check this out. I, in Mexico, I saw them do this, and, and the guy was like, and it was a doll. I'm like, what the heck? Out of a, out of a rope? In Mexico, they can make anything. They could. It's amazing. It's amazing. But, but, but let me, can I, can I use you, Jeremy? Okay. It's sad. I'm always picking Jeremy. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to think like, what the heck? What is it, Pastor? I love Jeremy. Okay, okay. But what can God do with this? Oh, no, I don't hear everything, praise the Lord. No, no, no. No, no, that, don't be, don't, no. no. Define. We define the rope. But how is it that we can define the man? What can this man do? Huh? Change the world. Lead his family. I'm sorry? Be a great husband. Huh? Give hope to people. Huh? Be a good leader. Inspire his daughter. Okay. Okay, sit down, sit down. Give Jeremy, give Jeremy a big hand. That's our problem. You look in the mirror and you don't see the potential that God sees in you. You only see the dirt. And you got this look. When I first said, like, what did he do? Everyone's like, human? That's the look you had. You know why? Because we judge its book by its cover and we could only say the surface stuff, but we can look deeper into the gold and say, you know what? Business owner, millionaire. Huh? Huh? School, school developer. Huh? Government official. Pastor. Huh? We, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't look at the depth. We only look at the surface. And no wonder we never see the gold. Because there is no gold on the surface. The surface is only in the depths of the dirt. And how many know that we were created out of dirt? Mm -hmm. Come on, look at your neighbor and be like, ooh, you're dirt. <laughs> Listen, there are things that we have yet to see in this man. There are things that people have yet to see with Elevate Church. There are many of you, you may have already overlooked us or discounted us. You know what people would, would, would say about this church? They would say, oh, that's the Hispanic church. Uh, look around. There's a lot of everything. You know why? Because we chose to see the gold and not just to look at the surface that Newhall is 90% Hispanic. But how many know that when you dig deeper, man, God sees the gold of every color. And that's what we see at Elevate Church.
That's what we see at Elevate Church. Every creed, every color, every nation declaring the works of God. Amen? Amen. So don't, don't come to me like, well, I see a Hispanic church. That's what they told me. Pastors, a lot of pastors, I, this is going to be a great Hispanic church. No, bro, shut up. Dude, don't, I'm not talking. I'm, don't even talk like that. What's wrong with you? Are you crazy? No, we're not going to be a Hispanic church. We're going to be an all-nations church. Ask me if it happened right away. No. No. I had a fight for it. I had a fight for us to see color in this house. You know why? Because I had too many people that were judging us by our book, and they were overlooking the potential that God has in us. And I'm tired of people overlooking your potential. And you should be tired of overlooking your own potential and start seeing the gold inside of you instead of always looking at the dirt. Because we all got dirt. You were, you were created by dirt, and you go back in the dirt. Am I speaking to someone today? Come on. We got to do something. I love the rope example. Do you guys like that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's take um, the woman with the issue of blood. We've got to hurry up. The woman with the issue of blood was labeled the woman with the issue of blood. If you ever read the Bible, it says the woman with the issue of blood. It even has a title for it. And this woman had an issue. For 12 years, she had an issue. In other words, in the physical, we know that the story says that she had a flow of blood for 12 years. She was sick in body. But so many of us, we have an issue inside of us that, that may be a secret. There's an issue inside of us that may be something that's disturbing. There's an issue inside of us of maybe offense, maybe anger, disappointment. There are some issues that every single one of us have. We all have issues. Every single one of us. Well, this woman was labeled issue, and the reason they called her the woman with the issue of blood is because they put a garment on her that because of her blood flow, she was unclean and unfit to be a part of any type of community with the community. And this woman spent all her money. Listen to me. She did everything in her own strength. She spent money on doctors, psychologists, therapists. Uh, she went to, you know, professional uh, uh, doctors that address maybe issues of what she was having. This woman spent all her money. She was a wealthy woman. If you study the, the word, this woman had bank. She can pay for anything. But how many know that there's only so much you can do in your own strength in anything in this life? But there has to come a time where you make a decision to shift your focus from I got this to shifting the focus to He's got me. And you know what happened? The woman said she finally shifted from here's what I can do in my strength. Some of you, you're not healed yet because you're still focused on what you can do. Well, guess what? You can't do it, but he can. And she said, if only I touch the hem of his garment. Let me say it this way. If only my issue can touch him, I will be made well. She didn't say, I hope I'm made well. Uh, she didn't say, uh, there's a chance I'll be made well. She said, I will will be made well. You know what the difference was? She shifted herself from self-help to faith. And we know the Bible says this, and when she shifted and she did what was impossible in the natural because you were not allowed to be in community, right? You were already marked, but this woman wanted to get in that deep crowd and she wanted to get to the gold. She wanted to get to the Lord, the Savior, and she steps in there and she says she touched the him and the Bible says this, and power left Jesus. Let, let me tell you something. You have the deciding factor of Shiv. He's got the power to move in. And when power was released from Jesus, the Bible says, and she was made whole immediately of that flow and it stopped. And you know what he did? Jesus turned back and said, who touched me? See, God's just waiting for someone to touch him today with their issue. So many of us, we have our issue, but we're dealing with our own issues. But you ain't touching God with the issue. You can describe the issue. You can define the issue. You can talk about your issue, but you don't use your issue to touch God. Because when you take your issue to God, that's why he says, come boldly to the throne of my grace, and I'll answer you. And so this woman, boom, touches him. She's, boom, power comes out of Jesus. And then, you know, she's freaked out like, oh, my God, scared. Well, guess what? Jesus says, hey, girl, chill. Your faith has made you well. The next shift in your life is not going to be the next big idea that you have. The next shift in your life 
is not going to be the next self-help development book that you need to read from an author. The next shift in your life is you letting your issue touch Jesus. Because the moment it touches Jesus, the moment you have faith to say, as long as I can touch him with this issue, I will be made well. God will release power for you to shift into this new season. That's your choice. And some of you, you're angry. But why? The woman had 12 years of an issue. Why don't we learn from her issues that we don't want to be stuck with 12 years in the same year? God gave us the word to give us examples. God gave us the word to breathe life. God gave us the word to not only give us life, but to speak life and to encourage us and to empower us to shift and say, I won't be like that woman with 12 years. That goes for the guys too. I don't want to be the guy for 12 years of the same issue. Do you get what I'm saying? Let me take it a step further. Paul, same guy. 1 Corinthians 13, 11, he says this. He sees the church and they're acting up. He said, when I was a child, my speech, feelings, thinking were all those of a child. But now that I'm an adult, I have no more use for childish ways. In other words, he's saying, church, you better grow up. Change, shift. He was saying, when, when I was a child, I, I, I had tantrums. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, think about it. I, I had tantrums. Uh, have, you ever, have you ever had, my boy Isaac was a tantrum, I mean, professional. The boy can, he knew how to turn blue and he knew how to get attention. Like, literally, he would stop breathing. Ah. I mean, he'd be like, ah. <laughs> and then turn blue. And and he'd be like, all right, bro, go ahead. And you know, and of course, at first we're like, <laughs> you know, and then I finally just said, leave him alone. Yes or no? Like, let, let him let him cry. Go. Remember that? Like, let, let him cry. He he. You know why? Because tantrums, he created tantrums to manipulate us. Like so many of us do. We get mad at God. Well, I ain't going to church no more. <laughs> what? Uh, I'm not. And, and, and then there's people that are just still carrying the same offense. And, and, and it's the same issue. The same. The moment you don't like something, man, you're just waiting for me to mess up. To have an offense. I told you. I told you they were like that. See, because people are good at identifying the dirt, but no one's good at identifying the gold. Come on. The, the, the same old finances. This, this, the same old family, it doesn't change. The same negative, the negative person always negative, negative. Like they know you, they've labeled you negative. Like the moment people see you and if they do this, you already know you're negative. They don't want, you know, if, if, if you ever see me just change routes, you know why. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. I mean it. I, because I'm going to hear it again. Like, oh, great. Now we're going to hear. He's just looking for the perfect church. Dang, you messed it up the moment you walked in. What are you talking about? <laughs> this church was fine until every single one of us walked into it. Then we messed it up. But we serve a perfect God who knows how to perfect us. Paul says, when I was a child, my speech, how I talk. So many of us, we, we keep talking the same things over, the same drama, the same issues, the same problem. You're good at defining your mountain, but you don't know how to speak to the mountain. The same thinking, same thinking. They just want my money. They just want my money. Same thinking. Like, what? It's in the Bible. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse. I have been tithing for 22 years before ever being a pastor. I have tithed when I had the last dollar to my name, but I was never going to rob God. If it was 10 cents to the dollar, then if all I had was a dollar, you got 10 cents, Lord. And if I was faithing it up, you'd get 20 cents. I would. I'm not kidding you. I always gave offerings to God. But same thinking, same feelings, emotionally, always just touchy. Just, uh, just, can you imagine? 
being this grown adult and I have to start carrying Jeremy over my lap. Okay. Yeah. It's okay, hijo. It's okay, baby. That's, that's awkward, man. That's, that, that's what Paul was saying. When I was a child, I spoke like one. I thought like one. I was emotional like one. But man, once I grew up in God, man, I put away those stupid childish things. I got to stop that. I got to shift out of that offense. I got to shift out of that doubt. I got to shift out of that pain. I got to shift out of that lie. I got to shift out of whatever it is that is keeping you from moving forward to those things that you have yet to be, see, or do. You have to decide that. Well, I'm just looking for the move of God. He moved. Shift. But how many know that even though you may be someone that, it's fact, maybe you are negative. You can shift from negativity to positivity. Yeah, pastor, you know, you just, I'm always offended. All right, well, praise God. Well, guess what? You discovered that today. You can shift from offense to forgiveness. See, there's, 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 no, there's no wrong place that God can't make right. There's no broken place that God can't make whole. There's no blind place that God can't open your eyes to see. Hmm. Matthew 9, 27, 30 says this. As Jesus went from there, two blind men followed him. Come on. Two blind men followed him. They discovered a shift. Have mercy on, on us, son of David. And when he had gone indoors, the blind men, look at that, the blind men, man, they, they came in. In other words, they were shifting from the season of being blind to this, uh, they said, no, uh, but we know one who can open our eyes. And nothing's going to hold me back. Nothing's going to limit me from getting my healing. Nothing's going to stop me from seeing again. And so they followed him inside and they asked him, and he asked them, do you believe that I am able? Say this, I am able. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, do you believe that I am able? Do you believe that I can? Do you believe that I will? He says, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Do you believe that, that I can help you with your shift as long as you decide to believe me today? And look at this. And they said, yes, Lord. Yes. They replied. Then he touched their eyes and he said, according to your. I'm sorry. According to what? Faith. Whose faith? So that means that you're just one faith away from your breakthrough. According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. It's going to take faith to shift into this new season. For every single one of us, for Elevate Church, for your family, for your children. Maybe you've been blind in your mess. Maybe you've been blinded with your hurt. Maybe you've been blinded with your offense. Maybe you've been blinded from the lack, but guess what? But he is able. He is able. And look at this. Romans 14, 23 says this, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. I'm going to say that again. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. What do you mean, pastor? That means that the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. Everything we do, we do by faith. How you worship is by faith. You know why? Because you are worshiping a God you can't see, you can't touch. Yet, I lift my hands, I sing. That takes faith. It takes faith to wake up every day and say, I'm going to try again. I'm going to go. Today's a new day. It takes faith. And anything outside of faith, God sees as a sin. God says, trust me in everything. That's why when we, when we receive our meal at the table, it takes faith to say, Father, thank you for providing this meal. It took faith to get it to begin with. 
Thank you, Father, for providing this meal for us. Thank you for providing for those who are less fortunate. Thank you, Father. It takes faith. God told the people of Israel, listen, I can conquer and slay the giants. I can take you into the promised land. I can give you a new day. And you know what the problem was? Is that people of Israel were too small to see their big God. Too small to see the big God that wanted to do something for them. I have never seen anywhere in the Bible where God rebuked anyone for having great faith. I've only seen God rebuke the Israelites for being too small. So many of us are living too small. Too small for where you're, you're, you're living below your potential when God wants you to live above your potential. Are you hearing me today? The only thing I can't overcome in your life is your unbelief. That's the only thing you can't overcome. That's your choice. Can't overcome that. You know why? Because it's called free will. You get to choose to believe him or not. God says, I want to heal you. You're like, no, no, he doesn't. Yeah, I can't do that. Okay, you're right. He can't because you won't. You won't. And there is special faith where sometimes it takes a person to come in and build people's faith up. And that's beautiful. But there's too many of us that are still living below our potential. You know what the issue is? And I close with this. Here's the issue. Too many of us are still living our spiritual and physical recession. What do I mean by that? We grew up poor. And, and, and this isn't to dog my mom. My mom did the best she could as a single mom. But, man, I remember when it was hot in the summer, she wouldn't let us turn on the AC. And my mom is like, hard. it's like 100 degrees. What's wrong with you, mom? It's like, no, no, it's too caro. It's too much. And, you know, and so she's like, open the windows early in the morning, 5 a.m., and turn on the fans, and then close the windows by 11 a.m. And, and it was, it's, that, it's that conditioned mindset of poverty. No, no, no potential of like, but no, she didn't have anyone to say, God can do more with you. God wants to promote you. God wants to elevate you. God wants to do something. No one ever told her that. And when it was too cold, you would want to turn on the heater. It's like, no, no, it's not caro. It's expensive. I'm not kidding you. Sometimes she would even tell us, go turn on the, the, the pilot gas from the stove. Turn on the, turn on the stove because that was cheaper. And so I get more covers. And my mom was not a cruel mom. My mom was barely making it. But you know what happens to so many of us? You find yourself today thinking, speaking, and feeling like you did then. And God's saying, enough. Enough. Stop saying where you come from. You're under a new lineage, and his name is Jesus. You have a new bloodline, and his name is God the Father. Stop it. I'm sick of it. I'm done with it. Stop telling me what you don't have. Stop telling me what you can't do. Enough. Shift. And it's true because I started off like that as I got married at age of 18 years old. I don't recommend it. Don't do it. We don't recommend it, right? Don't do it. And jack you up for years. And then you need a miracle, praise Jesus, like we did. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> don't do it. You're crazy. But I remember I started being the same way like my mom. Don't do this. Don't do that. Get a cardboard. We didn't fix the window. I put a cardboard on our window. Our broken window. I did. I ain't got no money. But I had no faith to believe for anything more. But the moment I came to Jesus Christ, God shifted the way I thought. And then before you knew it, I got hungry for the word. I got hungry to grow. I got hungry to study. Oh, man, I devoured books like crazy. And God has shifted my life from one place to the next, constantly favoring me, meeting with people that are just big people, just big people who, who 
come for my counsel, who I meet with, who I talk with, and, and people are like, hey, so what university did you go to? And, you know, I hate to say, I didn't go to one, you know. I, I don't like doing that, but then I just say, I said, honestly, man, I did, and I just fell in love with God, and I read his word day and night, four hours a day, and I just allowed God to renew the way I think, and he renewed my life, because you can't say old things have passed. Behold, all things have become new until you have shifted into the new. You won't. Something's got to change. Do you know that we're the only ones that put the limitation on God? You put the limit on an unlimited God. How sad is that? That's what we do. Like right now, I'm like, God, what are we going to do about this building? I know you want us to grow. You want us to build. You want, I know you want. But you know what happens? My head gets in the way. And I'm like, well, how's that going to work? And God's like, I slay giants. I give promises. I give land. The Bible says that I own the cattle on a thousand hills, and they belong to me. And I'm just like, okay, how are we going to do this again? <laughs> that, that, do you see how small we think? God says I own everything. I, I, I own everything. And it's by faith that you withdraw from heaven. It's not by your talent it's not by your might. It's not by your own power. But it's by his spirit who lives in you, who helps you shift into the next season. Ephesians 3.20, look at this. Last verse. Let's go home. Now to him who is what? Able. I'm sorry. Now to him who is what? Able. Who? Yeah. Him what? Able. Is able. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So when you get to heaven, you have no excuse of why you didn't step into destiny. God's going to look at you and say, I gave you power. 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 Don't tell me about all the sad stories. I gave you power. I gave you dominion. I gave you authority. I gave you everything you needed. There's no excuse. I gave you everything. Stop. But, but God, but I, I did. I said to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that one can ever, one can ever ask or what, think or even imagine. He says, by the power that works in us. Start with small steps. You know how you do that? I'll tell you. I like specific restaurants. I'm very picky with my food. Why? Because I grew up in poverty. So I eat good now. <laughs> I do. I eat good. I eat good. I ain't, I ain't gonna, I'm not even going to apologize for it. There's a restaurant I love. I love Roos, Roos Chris. Anybody like Roos Chris? Come on, somebody. All right, Morton's, Roos Chris, uh, Laurie's. You know, um, there's, there's so many good steak. Fogo de Chao? Huh? Mastro's? Oh, okay, so amazing. Okay, when you, obviously I don't do that, you know, like a bunch of times a year. I probably do like maybe once or twice a year to celebrate myself, you know, like my birthday's coming up October 19th. <laughs> See, yo, no, you missed it. It's October 20th. See, I was testing you. I wanted someone to say, no, it's the 20th. It's the 20th. <laughs> Y'all, anyways. So check this out. So when I walk into restaurants, do you think I'm just like, just take me where you want? Oh, I always tell the people, like, give me ocean view. And they're like, oh, there's no ocean here. <laughs> you know what I mean? In other words, give me the best of the best of the best of the best. And so many of us, we just, we just, we just waltz into things like, no, shift, man. We should be ask masters. You have not because you ask not. And we just let life take us. Okay, I will let you. No, you ask. I've asked for the most craziest things. The most, you would probably be like, how did you do that? What do you mean you asked for that and they gave it to you? There's been companies that have gone, hey, listen, we're doing this. Would you mind helping us? I've had Paramount Studios. I've had Universal Studios. I've had big organizations that have blessed our church with stuff. Because all I did was ask. 
that's how you, you see. And now to him who is what? Able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above. Because you know you can't even, some, some, we can't even afford certain things. But we're going to ask. What's the worst thing they're going to say? Well, if you don't ask, they already said no. So you might as well ask and actually hear the no. <laughs> but I honestly think you'll hear a yes. Some of you, you haven't asked for a raise. And you deserve it. Now, if you're lazy or procrastinator and you don't get your job done, don't ask for that. <laughs> you, thank God you still have a job. <laughs> thank you, Lord, they kept me. <laughs> ask. Ask. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.